After a long drive outside the city, we arrive at Drakenstein Correctional Center. Milo asks for all of our phones and places them into the glove box. With a click of the box closing, we all jump out. We walked into a small square cement room. Many inmates were inside, bustling about, getting ready for their weekly Bible study. Everyone sat in silence as the head of city mission said her hellos. I'm going to let our guest introduce herself. Listen carefully now. She's a very heavy American accent. Their eyes all turned to me. Benches were moved into a group setting and Orange grabbed my hand. We sat down at a cold metal table with a group of male inmates squished onto the benches with us. Sheets of paper were handed out. This week's topic, loyalty. They read aloud several passages out of the Bible and took turns discussing what it means to them. It was nice to be surrounded again by such a flourishing group of Christians. It had engulfed my life growing up in Georgia, and now it had come into play again. It was a beautiful thing to witness, to watch them as God reflected through their eyes. I could feel the tears sweltering up. I walked into the prison with a major in political science and human rights, and I knew I would eventually go to law school, but eh, I wasn't so sure after that. It wasn't until this very moment I knew what I was meant to do. Enzo patted my shoulder. Come on, let me show you around. We walked into a beautiful courtyard of greenery surrounded by several doors. Through this door is the soccer house. This is where the inmates who participate in city mission live. The room housed about 50 inmates, all with their beds perfectly made. One was sitting in front of a television set. Several were running in and out of the room shouting hello as they scurried by me. The room was gigantic with bright walls, nice blankets, and pictures and posters everywhere. They could see the shock in my eyes as I walked around. It reminded me of when I had visited a prison back at home when building the library for Floyd County Jail. I remember my papa, who worked at the jail at the time, showing me around. I have the image of a solitary confinement room forever ingrained in my brain, with sharpies, paint, and scratches taking all over the tiny, dark, and horrifying cell. He told me many times they place them in straight jackets for misbehaving when they're in the cell. I could just see the darkening image of a singular person unable to move inside a cell with no windows, with no way out, where no one could hear them. And again, I knew when working with prison reform was what I was meant to do and what I had a duty to do.